our discussion today with the integumentary system. Now look at all the structures you find in the integumentary system. Generally, the first thing you think of is your skin, and that's primarily what we'll look at in this chapter. We'll look at the different layers that you find in it. Hair is another thing that you find in the integumentary system. Also nails and also glands, and we'll look at the anatomy of those structures too. Look at some of the functions of this system here, protection. Think about how this outer epithelial layer that we call the epidermis makes a good barrier. And you got to remember, it's not just keeping things out, but it keeps a lot of things in at the same time. Sensation. Largely, we know what's going on around us through all the many different types of sensory receptors found in our skin. We'll look at a few of those. Temperature regulation. Skin has a lot to do with that. If you look just deep to your skin, there's a lot of adipose tissue, so that definitely helps to hold some heat in. But think about also when you get hot, you sweat, definitely helps to cool you off. And by changing how much blood is moving through your skin, you can change your body temperature. When you get really hot, the blood vessels in your skin dilate. That way more blood comes to the surface and you get more heat loss. When you get cold, the blood vessels in the skin constrict. That way less blood comes to the surface and less heat is lost. They'll be covered further along too. Vitamin D production. Vitamin D is very important when it comes to calcium absorption and phosphate absorption. That's two of the very big raw materials you need for making bones. So we'll look at that further along too. <laughs> Excretion. There's a very, very, very tiny amount of waste and material ever gets out through the skin. Far less than 1% than what you might have been told. So it's very, very minor. And then also immunity. Think about if you didn't have this outer epithelial layer, you'd have a lot of infectious organisms and harmful chemicals, uh, more ultraviolet radiation, all sorts of things getting deeper into your body and doing damage. Now looking at the skin itself, don't forget that the integumentary system only has two layers, epidermis and dermis. Now look at that prefix epi, epi means outer. So that's the very outer epithelial layer and it is a stratified squamous epithelial layer. That means it's many cell layers and the outermost layer are thin and flat. You saw that type of epithelial tissue back with tissues in chapter four. So there's your outer layer, but just deep to it is the dermis or dermal layer. It's a deeper and a much, much thicker layer. And here's where practically all the strength is at. There's a lot of collagen, a few other fibers in there along with it, but those are very good for strength. When you look at the dermis of a cow, that's what leather is. It's obviously strong material because of all that collagen and other material in there with it. Now again, skin only has two layers, epidermis and dermis. But something we often look at at the same time is a deeper layer called the hypodermis. Again, hypo means beneath or below. So that's not part of the skin or the system, just something that's looked at at the same time because it's closely associated with it. That's some loose connective tissue, which is another type of tissue you saw in the previous chapter. But going back to that epidermis, there's your very outer epithelial layer around the body. Again, stratified means many layers. And remember, when you've got stratified layers, always look to the outermost layer to get the shape. And this would be squamous or flat. The epidermis also doesn't have blood vessels penetrating it. Because it's so superficial, it'd be easy to lose blood and it'd be easy for infection to get into it. So that's why you don't want blood vessels going through the epidermis. And even though it doesn't have blood vessels going through it, blood vessels will pass very close to it. And that'll nourish those deeper layers of cells where all the growth is occurring. It's composed of cells layered into strata. And strata just means layer. We're going to look at the five layers of the epidermis a little bit further along, and we'll see a basement membrane depth deep to it. Remember, that's something that most all epithelial tissue has. But going back to these different type of epithelial cells you find in this epidermis, the majority of them are what's called keratinocytes. Reason being, their primary job is to make keratin. That's a good, hard, strong protein that's in that outer epithelial layer. You want it to be strong. That way it gives you a good barrier. Melanocytes. Now, these cells would be found at the very deepest layer of the epidermis. So we'll look at those five strata here in a second. And at that deepest strata, you'll find a scattering of melanocytes. And melanin are what they make. Melanin is very good protection from ultraviolet light. That's why your skin gets darker when you get out in the sun more. There's Langerhans cells, which are a type of white blood cell. You'll get a good look at all those in a future chapter. 
and then Merkel cells, a very superficial type of sensory receptor used for light touch. You also hear about this outer epithelial layer desquamating. Desquamate or desquamation refers to the constant falling away of the very outer layer of epithelial cells. There's always new cells coming up deeper from below. A lot of mitosis going on down there, but the outer layer is always falling away. And you may have heard a lot of dust in houses is often old dead skin cells. You also hear about keratinization of these cells. Again, that's the process by which these keratinocytes add keratin. And you'll see as the cells move up from the deeper layers towards the top layers, they'll die and they have lots of materials being added to them. But let's take a look at these five different layers of the epidermis. Now remember, these are just layers of the epidermis, not all the skin. Now you start at the very deepest layer, the stratum basale. Here's where the mitosis is going on. Here's where these cells are dividing always pushing up the old ones and knocking away the ones on the surface. Of course, they'll get knocked away as you get abrasion and rubbing up against them. As they get dry, that tends to make them fall away a little bit quicker too. Just above that, remember we start at the deepest layer. So just superficial, it could be the stratum spinosum. Now here the cells start to pull apart just a little bit, but these desmosomes, these little protein connections between them holds on tightly. And where they pull apart, they might start to look just a little bit spiny, and that's where this layer got its name. Now, by the time you get to the stratum granulosum, the third and middle layer, here a lot of the cells have started to die. They've had a lot of these proteins added to them, so they're going to make a very nice, tough barrier. So again, they're starting to die at this point, and when you look at this middle layer, it often shows up very well on histology slides when you look at the epidermis. Now next we see the stratum lucidum. This fourth layer, again moving towards the top, is only found in what's called thick skin areas. Look at the palms of your hands and the soles, the bottom of your feet. It tends to be a lot more rubbing and abrasion and potential damage. That's what we call thick skin areas. And one reason that it's thicker is that the stratum lucidum is there. You don't see it in most all parts of the body. But then you get to the very surface what you can see. It's the stratum corneum. Now, thickest, this is the thickest layer by far. This layer is thicker than the other four all put together. Here's where most all your strength is at. So again, all the cells are definitely dead by the time they get to this region here. They actually are a little bit deeper, but they've had all these proteins, lipids, and other materials added to them, which is gonna make them nice and strong. Again, keeps a lot of things out and a lot of things in at the same time. But looking back at the thick and thin skin areas, Again, the thick skin has all five strata, but the thin doesn't. The thin won't have that stratum lucidum that we mentioned before. Also, you look in these thick skin areas, we mentioned where they were found, palm your hands and the bottom of your feet. And they also mention these thick skin areas, how you can see fingerprints and footprints. Now, even though you see those in the epidermis, which is the outer layer, they're caused by the deeper dermal layer. That deeper dermal layer's got two layers to it, and the superficial layer of the second layer is called the papillary layer. Papillae means projection in Latin, so it's actually projections of the dermis pushing up on the epidermis that give you fingerprints and footprints. And the reason we have those fingerprints and footprints is to make a very rough surface. That way as you hold something in your hand or whatever on the bottom of your feet to give you more traction, helps to grip and hold things. So again, in the thin skin, you only have four of the strata. You're missing the lucidum there. And also that corneum's not as thick either. This covers almost all the body and you'll find hair growth in the thin skin region, but not in the thick. And down here at the bottom, you see mention of a callus. A callus is an area where abrasion has been occurring. Think about, you often see these on the palm of your hand. Think about somebody's using a tool all day, maybe like a hammer, or whatever. That's a lot of rubbing, a lot of potential damage. That epidermis will respond by making that outer layer, the corneum, thicker and stronger. So that builds up a very thick, tough layer to resist any damage. And if a callus develops over a bony projection, then it's called a corn. But let's also look at skin color here. There are several things that affect the color of the skin. Well, they talk about pigments here, talking about the melanin. That's a very big one, but there's some other things that can be added to it. The quantity of blood going through the skin definitely affects it. 
and then the thickness of the stratum corneum. So those are some big things when it comes to the skin color. Looking at these different pigments, again, the cells at the very deepest layer called melanocytes are what's making this melanin. And again, that's very good for UV light protection. Ultraviolet light is very damaging to the DNA of cells. So the more sunlight you get, the more melanin you'll have in the skin to protect you from it. So there are those melanocytes. and They've got all sorts of little processes that grow out in between those keratinocytes. And those keratinocytes will take that material in. You may have heard of albinism before. Here's a genetic disorder where somebody cannot make that protein melanin. If you don't have that melanin, definitely going to have a very light appearance to the skin and also the hair. And also when you look at the iris, that's a part of the eye that's green or brown or blue or whatever. That's melanin in the eye that gives it that color. So that'll be lacking also. But another material you might see building up in the skin is one called keratin. This comes from vegetables. Things like carrots and such have a lot in it. And they can actually build up some of these cell layers, stain it, and maybe change the coloration a little bit. <laughs> may I notice the skin color of a baby may look a little bit orange if they eat a whole lot of carrots and such. That's a good example of where you might see that happen. So going back to blood circulating through the skin, think about when you heat up, your body sends a lot more blood to the surface. Also, if a person gets strong emotions or physically active or something activates what's called the sympathetic division of the nervous system, any of that sends more blood through your skin, often looks a little bit redder. But if the body pulls a very large amount of blood out of the skin, you might see cyanosis, a little bit of a slight bluish coloration to the skin when that happens. So again, a very large amount or a very low amount of blood going through the skin can definitely change its appearance. But again, that stratum corneum, that very outer layer, has a lot to do with how it looks, too. Often has a little bit of a yellowish staining to it. So looking here at these pictures and diagrams, you can see off to the side, epidermis. Again, that's the very outer stratified squamous epithelial layer. Here's your dermal layer, second deeper layer, far thicker than the first one. And again, here's your hypodermis down here at the bottom. When you start to see all these fat cells, adipocytes, that's when you know you've really gotten down into the hypodermis. So we mentioned those different layers of the epidermis. Make sure you know those five right there. There's two layers to the dermis. We're going to look at that here again in just a second. And you can see there's some different structures found in here, like they show a sebaceous gland. That's an oil-producing gland we'll look at later on. The oils like to be released onto the hairs, right there with those hairs. That'll help them to last longer, and they won't be so brittle. That'll give them a longer-lasting life. Over here, you see an erector pili muscle, which can pull on those hairs and stand them up straight. Happens when you get cold or maybe uh, scared, something such as that. Here's a sweat gland. Sweat glands don't tend to release their material onto the hairs, but they tend to have ducts coming all the way up to the surface right there, releasing those watery products to cool you off. And of course, there's nerves, collagen fibers, and all sorts of material in here too. Here's another little diagram. Again, there's the epidermis, the outer layer. Then here's your dermal layer, and again, once you get into this adipose tissue, there's the hypodermis right there. But if you look at this epidermis, there's your stratum corneum, very outer layer. There's your stratum lucidum, sort of in yellow. Remember, that's only found in the thick skin area. Right below it is that granulosum, and down here deeper is that spinosum, and then the basali, the deepest layer where the mitosis is going on. And you'll see where the dermis a little bit further along, it has a, pap has a papillary layer, which is this layer that's right there close to the epidermis, and then the reticular layer, which is deeper. Of course, you can see all these structures inside of it there, too. There's another little picture. Again, here we've got the epidermis, and then the dermis, and hypodermis deep down here at the bottom. If you look here, you can see one, two, three, four, five. Five layers of the epidermis, at least in a thick skin area. But notice in the thin skin area, that lucidum. Notice that's that little white line across there. That's missing in the thin skin where you're doing the thick. And also that corneum's a lot thicker there in those thick skin areas. But again, your papillary layer of the dermis is what causes fingerprints and footprints. That first layer of the dermis pushes up on that epidermis and gives you those fingerprints and such. Then again, your reticular layers down here. And also notice again how your epidermis does not have blood vessels going through it. The dermis definitely does. And then down here deeper, the hyperdermis has got a lot of that going through it. 
lot more blood vessels, which is why you put hypodermic needles down below the dermis into this vascular region. Some other things you might see are like Merkel cells, very superficial, used for very light touch. Sinian corpuscles, which are deeper, are more for pressure and vibration, things like that. Here's an erector pili muscle, which can stand a hair up. Might need that if you get cold or something. Again, sweat glands have their ducts coming all the way to the surface, where the sebaceous like to release them onto the hairs. Of course, the sebaceous or the oil-producing glands we'll look at further along. 